Hello and welcome to a Wargamer Online review. Oh, what we're looking at? Something new. Something big this way. Ah! Ah! Yeah, Sons of Behemoth. Yeah. Wow. Big, big thank you to Games Workshop to not only sending us the battle tome to have a look at and review and have fun with. Mega Gargan. We picked ourselves up oh, a Mega Gargan. Look at this. It's, it's such a, it's a big, big box. It's big. It's a big it, box. It is big. There's a lot of plastic. Okay, so we're going to jump into both of these. Should we start with the model? The model? Then the book. Yeah, okay. Okay, so let's have a look at the model. Yeah. And then we're going to have a look at the book. What I'll do is, in the link, we'll put a description. If you're only interested in the battle tome, there should be a link which will time zone you through you forward to that. Okay, yep. let's get into this. Before we start ripping the box open, let's just have a look at the box. We see the three builds of yep. the uh, Mega Gargan. Here is the Kraken Eater. Kraken Eater. You can tell because a little it's bit of Kraken. A little bit of Kraken tentacle. Where he's been chewing on. <laughs> True to his name. We have uh, the Gatebreaker. Kind of got that hangman's hood, which is awesome. I love yeah, that. it's very, very cool look to it. And then we have the War, War Stomper. Stomper. Yeah. As yet, we still don't know what the final price of this is. I think they're going to be about £120, Great British Pounds, GBP, yeah. um, something like that. We'll, we'll talk about value for money as we go through this, but let's jump into the model itself. Yeah. It's a big old thick box of plastic for sure, um, yeah. and it's up to the top before we even take the instruction manual out. Um, I think interestingly enough, as ever with a lot of these cover artworks, what you see is more or less what you get in terms of actual size. size. As you can see, if I position the base over the instruction manual, that gives that it's base as an edges. actual size base. Yeah. Um, so we got a model round here that we could look at. One of your little um, stone helmet dudes. Stone guard that I'm building. Little stone guard that we're building, but just to give an idea of what actual size giant looks next to a stone guard, it's pretty big. I'd say ooh, it's about six and a half inches. Yeah. Seven inches in height, something like that. Not as big as I was expecting. No, and but I'm I'm quite all right with that. I kind of like how they're you know they are big, they're tall, and they're muscular, but they're not kind of this you know like the forge. Old one, and the kind lanky, of that really, really lanky, tall. skinny. I'm kind of like how they've got that. I, thick think, set frame. I think what's nice about it is they still leave space for the Forge World one as well, yeah. In many respects, yeah, you if you want to go that route, to so it, I don't yeah. mind that too much. Let's just quickly go through the sprues and then we're going to jump into some detail stuff. So, here yeah. we go. First off, we've got I think that's um, the I mean. That's it, definitely the uh, Kraken Eater. But it's kind of got a bit of everything, because you've kind of got the Kraken Tentacle there, you've got the Gate Breakers. Oh, okay, yeah. So it's kind yeah. of... I don't But what we're already it's... seeing is a hell of a lot of detail, even on some of the smaller yeah, parts. Yeah, and it's weird. I was going to say, actually, you know, you with this sprue, I was noticing this whilst building the um, Stone Mage, you've kind of got this new up-and-down sprue look to it. Oh, so your well, sprues aren't... Yeah, it's... kind of... It's not a, just a rectangle anymore. You've kind of got these three They have, sprues. believe it or not, they have done that on some of the older kits and yeah. the idea is it's designed it's protect to protect those. that sort of thing to give it some strength it's good so it doesn't snap looks like legs and belly to me yeah i think oh, tickle 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 and because that's kind of your generic yeah so um, this is for tall. everything you're right this is big ass torso bit yeah talking yeah. a big ass is there a big ass can't find yeah. the ass I can't find it. <laughs> oh no. Ass has got to be in there somewhere and um, um there we go lots more, more parts great. you kind of got Crack and eat a bit, yeah. some more stomp a bit. There's a head there, there's a neck there. A bit of um, a few cannons so strapped together detail, there. Though. I think that's the thing is, isn't it? That's going to be the question when it comes down to the value of this model is, not only is it a big model, it's a big model with a with hell detail, of a lot of yeah. detail and we're seeing that already. This is the, the fourth and final sprue, but what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in on the camera now and have and pick out some of our favorite bits of detail. Okay, we're going to jump into some of those detailed pieces now, as I mentioned, and this is actually the net belly. We're going to have to come up yeah. with some terms for this. So this is the net, the net belly to um, the Kraken Eater, as you can see. I'm pretty much showing you, I suppose, in, in actual size against the model there, if you know what I mean. But you get an idea of the level of detail in this. And what I really like is there's lots of little cultural references, and we'll see yeah, this as we go. Yeah, it runs through the entire model. you kind of got bits of Idanethi. You know, this is the Kraken glass eater, isn't it? from, so, like, fishing fleets or something. Yeah, so they you live in the that. water, yeah, so... Yeah. 
And uh, interestingly enough, that bottle isn't an Ida Nepi one. It's ginormous. If you think about yeah. the size of that, it's amazing. Um, we do have a piece here from, I think this is the gate. Um, That's the gate, gate breaker, breaker, yeah. yeah. kind of okay, looks then. almost like a Skaven bell or something. And we've got a, a generic wooden club there. But again, you're getting different, even down to the rope. There is different types of rope tying this stuff together. Yeah. And more of these sort of, uh, I think... I. I I'm assuming they're meant to be like the glass ball floats that, uh, you know, famously the, I think it's the Japanese uh, used. So yeah. this is how they floated their fishing nets and they're still, if you ever discover one of these, it's seen as kind of good luck. There's these okay. glass balls floating around the ocean. Um, there you are, a little bit of uh, sailing trivia. trivia for you there. Um, again, love the fact that he's obviously wrapped a, a gate yeah, or a door because there's still the keyhole. Oh, yeah, yeah. the keyhole. Yeah, we've got that's a keyhole there to the door, and we've got a little bit of a horseshoe, um, uh, unfortunately, hanging upside down, which I believe is how you let the look drop out. But um, <laughs> obviously, not necessarily a lucky giant. Uh, but yeah, what we want to do, like I say, we'll keep going through the detail. Can this even fit on the screen? There's a big belly. So, lots and lots of texture. More yeah. so than, obviously, the it's existing card. Yeah. And, and hopefully that's showing up on camera. You can see that even on this skin here. So, this to me is a, a I think, two things. It will work really well for washers because mm -hmm. the washers will kind of, if you do it well, it do it liberally it. enough with the contrast paint, you'll yeah. get away with it. But also for blenders, they're going to yeah. have a heyday with this, isn't they? Because there's so much texture to play with. And that's the thing, that's what I kind of like about it. If you want to get the model done fast, I mean, like a contrast and a dry brush probably would work itself quite oh, well. Oh, sure, sure. Those. Especially with all, again, showing this skin texture here over all of this, it is definitely lending itself yeah. to kind of a rapid paint or alternatively tre treating this as a massive centerpiece. Because the army works in two worlds. You can either do a Mega Gargant army or a Sons of Behemoth army, but of course these kind of company um, the, all of the, the different armies, factions. Yeah, using mercenary yeah. rules. Yeah. There are limits though, aren't there, yes. to which which gargant can go with which faction, which we'll come to when we when we yeah. cover the um, uh, the actual battle tome. The obligatory um, peasant dude. has finally got caught. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for those of you who know the old model where the dude's running <laughs> yeah, away. The old gargant and I think model. it literally is him. It's certainly the same shoes. So I think he finally got caught by the gargant. Finally caught up. Um, he's not looking very happy. In fact, actually, there's more than one dude squished in peasants, there. Isn't yeah. There's a couple of peasants in a whole world. What can only assume is a whole world of hurt. Yeah. Um, but again, just showing some of the pieces. There's there's the uh, chest and uh, lovely bits on the toenails and all the rest there. I'm absolutely loving this. So yeah, big pieces odd, of plastic. Odd number of toes as well. Some feet have four. Some feet have three. You know, I think. Gargants aren't too worried about kind of toe numbers, are they? I mean, no. I mean, what's a toe between friends yeah, at the end exactly. of the day? So there we see an example of a three-toed toe, <laughs> three-toed uh, three foot. foot. Thank there you very you much, and uh, a four-toed foot. So you know, if in doubt, <laughs> options. Wow, these sprues yeah, do keep yeah. coming though. Um, this is clearly again another bit from. Um, it looks it's to be a bit mirrorwormy, isn't it? Know, you know, skin off a mirrorworm or something like that. Some sea creature. And to me, herein Skulls. lies the value of the model kit, yes. really, because. The problem is, is you buy this kit and there's three highly detailed large models or th three highly detailed builds available yeah. to you. The reality is you're only really going to use one of one those build, builds yeah. per box. But you get so many spares. But if you're into converting and creating cool little Widget Mawatsits for your yeah. bases or a little add-ons for, um, um, for your models, then there are so many spares and yeah. options available. I mean, like, you kind of got like weapons and shields and again, there's a shield. There's a little shield there with some kind of hydro and fun. I mean, you got there. some dark elf like bucklers and swords. It's it's just there's a vulture. There's some shields from Warcry. I mean, uh, what's that just shield everything. there? That's, that's oh, it looks be pretty empire, empire doesn't, it? doesn't yeah. it? In fact, actually, you know what? I think that's a pub sign. Look, because it's got two yeah. little hooks at the top. So. The that was obviously the, the dance of the white lion or something like that, which is um, you know clearly just picked up the whole pub and drank its contents, uh, including <laughs> and then its ate patrons, the pub. no doubt. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, cool little gadgets and gizmos that I've not seen in any faction, to be honest. Who knows what yeah. this little thing? I think it's meant to be like a really savage large harpoon head, maybe. 
I mean, yeah, I'm sure it will have been somewhere at some point. Now. Great little shield there as well. Um, yeah, so uh, as you can see from this, again, tons and tons of detail. It's, there's just so much going up in that little corn shield, by the way, I really like that. Yeah. And of course, that's like the rear shell of a Leviathan. Leviathan, yeah. <laughs> Just, just killed the Leviathan, shelled it, it as stuck a it to his belly. Used it as a cod piece, basically, <laughs> I think is the, the general gist of it. Again, what, what we're doing is we're just kind of flying around the sprues, really. Interestingly enough, some heads larger than others. You know, a yeah. noticeable difference in scale between that head and that head. Um, let's see if I can get them both on camera. There you go. So you can see quite a bit of whip, but... Again, it's got a bigger beard, though. Just lends itself. Great detail. Look at the detail even on the tongue there. So we do need to be careful knocking the camera. So avoid you getting seasick. Um, and but just just that, just that fish. That's a big ass fish. Yeah. I'm intrigued to know what that fish was. What was its life? What was it doing? How did it end up in this bag of bits? Um, we are looking at the stretch net again now, uh, and again, it's just there's just wherever they could add detail, they've added detail. So the sculpting effort alone on this, each one of these pieces is a tiny, tiny work of art, isn't it? Look, some dude's head there, by the way. I'm sure that clips onto something at some point. Oh man, I've just found another fish. Look at it, and it, oh, look at it. It's it's one of the little horrible little fish, but look, it's all dried out. Yeah. <laughs> that's good that's fantastic yeah oh man um yeah, likewise um some dude that's all dried out so desiccated i think is the word i'm looking yeah. for should we go with desiccated i mean you know if you play Ideneth deep and that's definitely going to be a lot to put on your bases and stuff <laughs> <laughs> well it's just anything is it like i say the point is if you were to do a full faction of these look even the ship's uh, wheel i mean you know uh, uh, I'm I'm looking at this, and you've kind of got oh, if you paddle. go to these bony bits here, like a mega boss with that kind of around his collar, just around or around his over the top of his yeah, head. Yeah, just if his face was, if it's, Let's just turn it that way around. Look, you put the mega boss's face there, and it's kind of drooped over yeah. his shoulders. And I think that's the thing, isn't it? Like I say, you know, not only I know are that... you getting a giant kit, you know, a really cool giant kit, you're getting so much to kind of convert with your other arms. Bits like this always frustrate me. Though you see this boat now with this boat with this beautiful work yeah. and this curved. I, I just I want to see the rest of the boat. <laughs> Where's the why? Please, Games Workshop, if ever you're gonna do broken bits, just go on and sculpt the rest <laughs> and release it as a kit. With optional extra. Just because it's so cool. Um. Yeah, so we know that this has, um, I think, raised a few eyebrows on price, to be sure. And, yeah. you know, um, I think it's one of those things. You have to consider what the army is going to cost you to do, not necessarily the individual model. Um, mm. That's one way of looking at yeah, it. It's like, so three Mega Gargants plus three of the little guys. You're probably looking a, at something like a 500 army. quid army, aren't you? Yeah. Something like that. It's not the cheapest of armies. But it's not, the, oh, most it's not the most expensive compared to some of the recent releases. Yeah. Um, the other point is, is from a perspective of, are you just going to tip all of the offcuts in the bin? In which case, um, yeah. you're not going to feel like if there's you're not a big converter. Kit. Exactly, if you're not a big converter and those kind of things, it's going to feel and a hell of a be your only armor, for 120 then. quid for one of these models, basically. Um, like I say, personally, it's kind of I think from a price point of view probably come out more or less where I expected it. I'd have liked it to be less, who wouldn't? But it came out more or less where I expected yeah, it. I'd, I mean, I'd like all of the games you look at, shop products to yeah, yeah, less. You, you kind of you look at the the techless model and he was like a hundred and five pounds. There's a and lot. he was a big model. A big model. Archeon, Nagash, are all at the hundred pound mark and they were big models. But you also what's in the box is what you build you know you don't get anything don't get extra anything from it. whereas no. like this like you were saying you know you get a model but you also get a lot of cool kind of bits and bobs from yeah it. you i mean if you did a, a two thousand point of these so you had three of these and then a bunch of the smaller guys oh yeah you you've, you, you've got bits box for life you know in yeah, terms of yeah. cool little bits you can drape over other models add as basing material or just whatever even some of the scenery pieces you know the draping net just hanging from an archway yes. of a scenery piece yeah. or something like that um it's, it's it's all there for you so yeah i mean it, 
that aside, the, the the price aside, and we've not actually seen a formal price anyway. That aside, um, I, the detail it's on beautiful. the model is incredible. Yeah. You know, they've kind of they've hit us with the Lumineth and the Lumineth were amazing and then now they're hitting us with this and it just makes me very excited to see what they can do for Sigma coming forward. I, I think the proportions are good. Yeah. Looking at it. What we're gonna do is with now we've done the unboxing, we are gonna get this built. Um, yep. this is gonna get painted up and it's gonna be added to our factions. We're not gonna right now we're not going to add Sons of Behemoth as a faction army. to the but channel. We'll definitely do this as a mercenary. Absolutely, we'll we, we'll see him on a few battle reports in the coming weeks for sure. Because yeah, yeah. um, we'll get, you know, we'll choose. We're gonna have to go with one of them that suits our factions well. We've got a lot of order factions. Which one is it that goes with order? Can you remember? I'm kind of happy it's the Kraken Heater because I have to say I like the Kraken Heater. Yeah. I know you like the hooded head. Oh yeah, but of we, um, we the don't war stomp. Really have a death army, so uh, <laughs> yeah, we don't really have a death army. So is it the, no? Sorry, it's the gatebreaker. The gatebreaker is the kind death. of the hangman's hood. And yeah. then the war stomper goes it's with chaos, chaos factions. Yeah. yeah, it should be mentioned as well. All three can go with destruction. So, oh okay. So yeah, if you got a destruction sense. army, yeah. happy happy Do days. What you want. Right, well, look forward to seeing us putting together the Kraken Eater. I may even just do a live stream show um, uh, as we build it and go yeah, through okay, that. I yeah. might do that over this weekend. Um, so look out for that as well. Um, right, at that, we'll come to the end of the model and let's get into the battle tone. Yep. Okay, Jack, we're going to jump into the book now. You've had a little bit more time with it than me. Um, like so, yeah, not I'm a lot more time, but you've had a bit it. more time, so you've had a skin. Um, yeah, yeah. There's actually, you know what? It's a really nice book. Kind of, um, again, I'm like comparing it to the Lumineth book, and there is some amazing artwork in there. Um, you know, a map of Gur, the stories, and they've kind of what I really like about this book, and you'll see it like if you read through it yourself, they've gone with this kind of folklore esque feel to it. So it's kind of talking about different things and it's kind of, you know, that's why things are like that. It's because they did this and it's kind of got this folklore aesthetic so it's, to it's, it. It, it. Yeah, it's like an origin story. Yeah. They're kind of yeah. trying to set the scene for this, uh, you know, a faction that's been throughout all of fantasy, yeah, but trying to give yeah. it a, a... Trying to make it more, more of a depth. mainstay now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, these things do actually have civilizations and stuff and it's nice to see it so you know you've kind of got this you know sigma i mean you can just see how big they are compared to them just swatting them it is incredible when yeah. you see like three of them there and actually some of the little guys at the background there as well look uh, just getting little guys stomped on just getting stomped on but when you see these big guys yeah just wading through sigmarine um the sigmarite army is quite funny yeah this i really like this so this kind of talks about the competition between gork and walker and Bayama. You know, they were the two kind of pinnacles of destruction and going through Gork and Morka, I mean it talks about it in the Orc book, but he actually got tricked by Zeech. Zeech started whispering in Gork and Morka's ear saying, you know, you are nothing but a dog to Sigma, you know, you just do as you're told, you're a you know, you're a good little pet for Sigma. And, you know, he actually started to get to him and he kind of looked over and he saw Bayamat just kind of wandering around, doing his own thing, kind of, you know, sleeping and eating when he pleased. He doesn't have to, uh, you know, report to anybody, whereas Gork and Morka did. So what happened was Gork and Morka actually basically challenged him to prove himself to Gork and Morka, to do things that Gork and Morka did. And, you know, these are all his trials. So Gork and Morka ended up flooding an entire, you know, he drank from an ocean and then belched it all up and ended up flooding a thing. And he challenged Gork and Morka to do the same. And what he did, Gork and Morka basically belly flopped in the ocean and caused a massive flood, which is what so you can see here. you've got this competition here. going off between them. My favourite one is this one at the end here, where, it, you know, a new sense of rivalry. He's had an eating competition. Yes. So Gork and Morka goes around and eats the carcasses of all the beasties yeah. he's killed in the past, yeah? Yeah. So how's he going to top that? He, 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 he eats fewer monsters, but then he goes through the Greed Mouth Realm Gate to Shaiish, where he, he eats, eats all the ghosts. ghosts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Essentially the, the ghosts, ghosts of all the monsters, the monsters that Gork and Walker ate. Essentially, which is as they put it, cleaning the plate better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, one of my favorites, kind of this way you start to get the folklore as well, is um, Gork and Walker, they, they call them Giga Dross, but they're kind of like big fire monsters. And Gork and Walker slew an army of these Giga Dross to save Sigmar's. Um, uh, city 
and he challenged Bermat to do something similar. And what he did, he went to Volcatrix's lair, ripped the top of the volcano off, turned it around, and slammed see, slammed yeah. it back in there to kind of form um, a corkscrew to stop the volcano from exploding. What happened is a bunch of angry fire dwarves came out and started attacking him, and he stomped on them. And it says here, you know, stomp the worshipping warriors flat. The Doradin of the mountains have ever been short and squat ever since. <laughs> so you kind of get that folklore, why are dwarves short, short and squat? And the giants are like, what? Well, they met, stamped on them, didn't he? Of course. So these, these great sort of origin stories and myth and legend, if you know what I mean. You shouldn't yeah. be taken too literal, of course, because yeah, yeah. they are myth and legend, yeah. but that's what I really like about it. Great piece of artwork there of Sigmar just yeah, um, the world Titan. Yeah, and again, this is kind of this talks about the last trial of Bayamat mm. that Gorkamorka set to him, and the last trial was to fight Sigmar. Right. And he did. He challenged Sigmar to a duel, and after a big fight, Sigmar basically smacked him with Galamoraz right on the chin. They were in Gairan, and he smacked him. And Bayamat fell over, and in kind of his last thing, he ate a bunch of trees and belched forth the giant race as kind of one last act of defiance, and then ended up growing, going into a, a great slumber. Right. Okay. And, uh, you know, he slept, he slept for years and years and years until the big Realm Gate Wars, the Wars of Life, where Nurgle came and invaded. And Archeon tried to awaken Bayamat because he knew if he could and if he could control him, then he could break down the gates of Azir and get to Sigmar. Right. So, you know, he tried, he had these Skaven tunnelers drilling into Bayamat's back to try and get his nervous system to awaken him. And Alariel kind of sends out a plea, and Sigmar hears it, but more importantly, Dracothian hears it. And, you know, sends down this extremist chamber. And, you know, they come down on, on Dracoths to kind of defend and defeat the Nurgle invaders. And they, right. they kind of are a bit too late. But um, the Cellar Stump Prime with Galmaraz does one final sweep and cracks Bayamat's skull and kills him. You know? uh. And he, he rots away and his rib cage becomes kind of a great hall. They make a great hall out of it. And ever since then, the giants have been getting bigger and bigger. This is why you're getting these mega gargants. And a lot of the elder giants think that one day a new world titan is going to be born. Something bigger than all the rest. That is wicked. So that's kind of why the giants have been getting, getting bigger. bigger now. Because it's only recently that Bayamat's been killed. But... Right. Well, we've got, I mean, beyond that, beyond the general fluff, what you've got into is a little background about the tribes. We also go Past into times. the mercenary, the fact that they're like as mercenaries, um, and then a, a little bit of background on each one of them, the Kraken Eater, the War Stomper, and the, the Gate Breaker. Yeah. Um, and the Man Crushers, which are still kind of the, the little ones. The, yeah, yeah. But still, actually, I, I still like that model, yeah. to be honest. No, I, I know like it's an it. old model, but I still like it. I think it's nice bit of belly, which is what you want, isn't it? Great piece of artwork here. Love the fact that they've got things like all of these terrain pieces just hanging up in there and smashed into the walls and stuff. Yeah. That big shell. Is that an actual shell? Probably. Do you think they use that? They probably were actual shells, weren't they? <laughs> Definitely the tail over back here. Look, that's the tail from a, a Kelly and Alapax, and Alapax yeah. which is probably one of the best uses of the kitchen. Right there. <laughs> no, no, no hard feelings there at all from me whatsoever. <laughs> but you know, I mean, it's also no surprise that of all the Iden of Deakin, the thing that's dead is the Alapax. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. But you know what? You expect for hundred points. <laughs> uh, Let's <laughs> get into the violent colossus. So some lovely artwork, uh, showing some paint schemes, showing them uh, on the combat. Love nice orange beard there. That's yep. what you want. Um, up against the fire slayers there. Let's see how well they do there. Orange um, beard against orange beard there. And again, the gate breaker there. It's such a cool looking model. Of course, breaking through a gate. Well, I know, why not? Why not? <laughs> I'd still desperately wish that terrain was still available if anybody's got any spare terrain contact the channel <laughs> we're trying to build a chaos table we don't have enough of it um so uh yeah just brilliant artwork brilliant brilliant artwork love yeah. it love the bigger uh, rib cages there look at those kind of things um just gonna be a lot of fun isn't it just a big canvas to work on yeah i think you know if somebody's kind oh, of man, quite a prolific convert they are they are going to have a very good time i mean it talks about kind of the giants from other realms like shamanic giants which are clad head to toe in iron i think that would be such a cool army to see yeah. Yeah. giants with no hardly any skin showing they've just got metal all over Armor them plating all over them 
Um, lovely, lovely uh, uh, variation of skin tone there as well, which again just shows you how effective the models can look. So you know, don't just hit them with the straight, you know, uh, yeah. straight flesh. Think about what you want the army you know, to look grays, like as well. You know, darker skin tones, no, no, tan skin tones. That is that is an amazing piece of uh, painting skills going off there. By the way, it's just yeah. absolutely fantastic. Dark skin tone, brilliant. Um, okay, then, and even better. Um, uh, yeah. Pro tips on doing the dark flesh and Algae flesh variants and those toenails. Um, Lovely. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> A little bit of iron rack skin at the air, and of course, you know the uh, ginger hair, as they say. Yeah. Um, which, of course, you know, I think ours probably will end up with probably. ginger hair, I think. It's just, you know, yeah, nothing fantastic. else in, in homage to um, you, Jack. This is quite interesting, actually. Kind of, the, again, they're putting conversion tips. Peg leg. Like, how to make one of your giants have a peg leg. And, you know, personalised faces, <laughs> how to personalise the faces. And all oh, this stuff. Peg they're kind leg. Of, yeah, they're, it's really nice that, you know, for people who maybe aren't as... Um, you yeah. know, confident in conversions. Yeah. They're kind of, you know, showing what you can do and how to do it. Yeah, that is cool. Which I think is great. It's really nice. Um, I really like the idea of having a peg leg. Um, after that, we are into the rules. So, yes. so we jump into some of the rules and uh, yep. pick out a few highlights. Again, we're not going to go through every single page, but we will take a look to see. So these are all the rules um, if you want to play them as a pure giant army, you know, if you just want some sort of Bayamat in your army. So you kind of got, thank goodness they've added mightier makes rightier, you know, might makes right with ogres, mightier makes rightier with giants. So yeah. you've kind of got man crushers count as 10 models, gargants count as 20 models. Uh, the Mega Gargans counts 20 models for holding objectives. Thank goodness, because that does actually kind of make them viable yeah, in, a, in a list. Absolutely, yeah. yeah um, absolutely. You've kind of got this. This is quite cool. Chuck Rocks. Uh, in your shooting phase, you can pick one friendly man crusher giant wholly within 18 inches of your general, and that unit can chuck rocks. You know, it's not bad. D3 attacks each, fours, Force, threes, minus one threes. D3 damage. I mean, if you can't complain. You've got it a unit of three of them. It might be enough. Exactly. It's enough to maybe finish a unit off or enough to, to finish a character yeah, exactly. off. Yeah, exactly. Or, or just soften like something up before yeah. you go in there. You know, it's in. I love how it's an allegiance ability. You know, maybe I would have liked if they all got that, but maybe it would have been a bit yeah. too powerful. You know, maybe if they all just got it with one attack or something. I think they've but... got enough going off when it comes to combat, haven't they, yeah, as well? Yeah, exactly. So um, then you've got Lord and Master, which means depending on what Mega Gargan is your general, depends on kind of what tribe you get to take. So Kraken Eaters are takers, War Stompers are stompers, Gate Breakers are breakers. And that's kind of like your sub faction. So you get abilities from that and in your own command trait tables and artifact tables. Right, okay. So if we have a look at just one of them, the Taker tribes. Uh, so this is if yours is a Kraken Eater. Um, what get rid of them so you count as more models so man crushers are 15 and mega gargants are 30 models goodness which is really good i mean you know a That's mega huge. gargant counting as 30 models on an objective is quite good because there's not a lot of units out there which are above 30 models no and stuff no. like that so and you know and the yeah that's that's quite interesting that actually yeah. isn't it it's really hard to get rid of them because it's small base to count as 30 models as well. Yeah, you get two of them on there and you've got yeah. 60 models. I mean, even if you get three man crushers and that's like 45 models on an objective, and it's like, well, that's mine now. So you you do have yeah, objectives, even if you're like, pasting shifting, playing shifting objectives, and you put a uh, mega gargant on each one of the objective points, it doesn't matter where it drops, yeah, you're, you're 30 probably models. gonna have it, yeah, you know, exactly. wow. wow, even if you know, if somebody moves up and takes it and you just Tack it with your man crusher, uh, your man crushers, and then that's to like know that you've got to have thirty-one bodies on there before it. You, yeah, you yeah, know, exactly. like you, you know, say, getting your man crusher thirty well. bodies within six inches of it as well. As an object is a challenge enough, and yeah. all you've got to do is clip this with an edge of a base, and there's, yeah, 30, there's models. thirty models. Wow, so it's quite wow. good. Um, you kind of you also have more stuff for me collection, which yeah. means you get to choose two artifacts of power, and your general can have two artifacts of power, <laughs> which is great. No. Um, then you kind of, you know, you have command traits. Uh, wounds characteristic of 40, 40 instead of 35. 35. You know, that's big. Good. It's five more wounds, that's quite good. We and one to his one. attacks. Yeah. You've got all sorts. You can take one extra trophy by force for this general. The general can have up to two artifacts. So you, I think 
you can have up to three artifacts on it. Oh wait, no, sorry, that's um, each time an enemy warlord with an artifact of power is slain, you can roll for a triumph, that's it. Oh, so sorry, they right. can go along, they kill a warlord with yeah. an artifact, and then they pick you up their artifacts, but you get a triumph. It's, right. yeah, you know, they're taking way stuff from their Yeah, no, no, nice. Um, but sorry, this is the thing which gives you two artifacts, which is mm. cool, you know. You got like Kraken skin sandals, so it's it makes all your stomps better because you know his foots are protected. It talks about how they make sandals out of the Kraken skin, so they don't hurt it's, their foot. And you know what? It's a push from um, yeah. it's three instead of two attacks. It's minus, minus three, three ren instead of minus and two, three and three damage instead of yeah. D three. Three instead of D three is huge. Yep, that's huge. Uh, Glowy Lantern. Um, it talks about how the Kraken eaters hoard magical artifacts, and it makes him a wizard. Well, why not? Why not? Why not? That's very lesson, um, isn't it? Yeah, you've kind of got all sorts. Yeah, and, and of course, just reading what they're called is always good. Jaws of the Megalodon, a Wallopin Tentacle, and you know, it's just great to read it. So this is a still writhing long after the original owner's death. The Walloping Tentacle can be used to bludgeon, only to catch up stun preys in its crushing, rubbery grip. Yeah. So essentially, the tentacle <laughs> is still half alive. <laughs> Um, and what that means is uh, you can pick an enemy hero within three inch of the bearer and roll a dice on the four plus it suffers a mortal wound. You can re-roll hit rolls of one for attacks that target that hero. So until you the kind of like phase. stun him with the tentacle. You stun him with a slap. bit of Kraken tentacle slap face. And then, I mean, you've got, yeah, you've Different got tribes. also, you kind of got the Stomper tribe here, which yeah. they kind of get shouts where they can't use the regular command abilities. Or use you, shouts. yes, you, charge. Yeah. Great roll. Which, to be honest, most of them are stuff from the uh, core rulebook. So, like, right. instant six inch, reroll charge, reroll hits and ones. But one that I found really good, grab those rocks, chuck them at something, means all Mancrusher Gargans within 18 inches can chuck rocks. So I think there's something in a list which is like, you know, a War Stomper and, and nine Mancrushers man just throwing rocks across the table. It's certainly giving you, yeah, um, uh, an interesting Some dynamic to the army, sure. Well, yeah. Okay. And then uh, anything from the Breaker Tribe you want to pick out? Um, I mean, you know, you kind of get these fierce loathings table and you kind of get to roll, and it's almost like grudges from dwarves back in old fantasy, where they so kind of So if you get... don't like crowds, you get plus one to hit attacks made of ability that target 20 or more yeah, models. Yeah, stuff like add one to hit against monsters, add one to hit against war machines and monsters. Um, you know, it's... It's all, it's all quite good. Plus one to hit on giants is never bad because you want those attacks going. Hate fueled wreckers. I like that. Yeah. And then we're into a couple of custom missions, which, you know, I think always, unfortunately, don't get much attention, but they're actually yeah, great fun to play. Good. We've been experimenting with them. This is really cool. If you're running a campaign, you've got name and quirk generations for each of the titans, uh, for each of the gargants, rather. So for takers, for stompers, and for breakers, which is really cool. So, you know, you could have old mog cannon chucker who is filthy who has a fishy stench see i my my and of course you can have a lot of fun with this yeah. isn't it my name would be beardo um i, I mean you could go even go beardo the briny uh why yeah. not i think i quite like that i mean you could even go like beardo net herder or something oh, there's like even it. something sam if you're watching there's even something in for you look sock door the salt hand <laughs> <laughs> Um, but then you've kind of got all these quirks as well, you know, if you want, because, you know, if you're playing a, a campaign, you've kind of only got one giant, and maybe that actually kind of dictates how you play the Gargan as well. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah. If it's fishy, then you say, well, it's fishy, so, you know, you get minus one to hit or something like that. It's... So, mercenary rules, let's quickly cover that, because, yep. you know, the, it may well be that a lot of people take these up really as a mercenary model rather than a full faction. Yes, yeah, so each of the... So, the Kraken Eater can be a mercenary with order and destruction, the War Stomper can be chaos and destruction, and the Gatebreaker can be death and destruction, and so... But each one of them is actually a named character. So right. you've got Bundo Whalebiter, Kraken Eater Mercenary, who's the Order and Destruction, but he, all, he gets his own actual ability, so dead cunning for a Gargan. The Kraken Eaters are actually meant to be quite intelligent. It says, you kind of got a bit of story about each of them, and it says it can actually talk in sentences. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, which is weird for a guy. I mean, it has a lot of oh, gurgles okay. and grunts, but yeah, it but, is you know, sentences. Just full on form. sentences. Yeah. And it gives you actually, not only are they mercenaries, 
helping you actually get an extra ability with each of them. And now Games Workshop have showed all these on their websites, but you know, you get like fights at the end of the combat phase, you can reroll hits for attacks made by that model, which is really good. So, you know, reroll hits isn't bad. That's mental. Wow. Okay. And again, one eyed Grunuk and Big Drug Fort Kicker is in yep. there. And then we're into, I think, the specs or the stats rather. Do you want to quickly highlight what you see within these? Yeah, I mean, you know, first thing you notice, they're like 35 wounds. That's a lot of wounds. They've got an 11 inch move, and their long shanks mean they can move over models and scenery as long Four as up it's. save is respectable. Yeah, you know, it's respectable. The, the thing is. I mean, as ever, it's a monster, and that's yeah. one of the problems. It starts to go down, you know. Um, 35 wounds is a lot, but it can go away quite quickly and stuff. It, yeah, but it doesn't go down It doesn't go down far, massively, yeah, which is nice. As far as some of the other stuff. You're looking at, like, a less than 50% reduction yeah. of ability by the time you're down to the last wound. Yeah. You know, or the last five wounds, so... Yeah. It's a hard slog, yeah. you know. Twelve wounds suffered before you put take an inch off the movement. Eighteen, yeah, exactly. wounds, and they're big 18 wounds suffered, you know. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's exactly. a lot to do. Isn't um, it? So they are good. I mean, you know, they've got stomps, grips, and kind of that. So each one of them's got a different one. He can hurl debris. The mega gargant war stomper um, can jump up and down and has a boulder club. Um, something to know. I mean, they've all. I think they've all got. Yeah, they've all got the timber rule where yeah. the, when they die they fall over. Yeah. Um, something really good because I know this was something people worried about was the sons of Bayamat means anything that would slay them just inflicts d6 mortal wounds. So no hand of dust, no slayer of kings. You yeah. Know, you can't yeah. just remove them in one go. You are going to have to. After kill them. this model piles in, pick up to d3 any models within three inch and roll on the dice for each one. Then roll is at least double the model's wound characteristics. It's slain, so the whole stuff them in my yeah. net. Um, um, one of the things I think the Kraken eat why I mean to be honest why people might take these in order armies just for this rule is get off me land where you can kick an objective marker two d six inches. <laughs> which is insane. You run up to a middle objective and you kick it back. You just kick it back into your own line. That's awesome. That's that's quite funny. Yeah. That's really, really funny. Yeah. Um, and something I'll be employing. From a stats point of view, you've seen a, a common common theme, big range. Yeah. You know, which is good. Yeah, Reaching over it's gonna be hard to shield your characters, you know, yeah, when there's three yeah. inch and they've been there as a you know, as a bubble wrap. Um, comment three and threes. We're seeing threes, threes to wound. We're seeing minus twos, minus big three rends, which is and, nice. and big damage. I'm you know? glad they didn't go with force to hit because that yeah, was one. That would have been a like, death knell of the a army. Monster, that would have been a non-starter. The fact that threes to hit is really good. You see force to hit on um, any of the shooting attacks generally, yeah. don't you? Which is fair enough. You know, yeah, they shouldn't be brilliant archers, but at least these things stuff. can do damage when they get in place. Um, let's just have a look at what that means in some in some very real sense. You know, two attacks with the stomps, threes and threes minus two, doing d3 damage. One attack with a death grip, threes, twos, minus three, rend d6 damage. Yeah. And then the club on attacks, eight attacks, eight attacks threes and threes, minus two, rend two damage. I would not, not, yeah. not shambolic. I would have liked to see more um, static damage you know instead of like the death grip being d6 damage maybe being like four damage or three plus d3 yeah, or something like exactly. that or, it's just know. the d6 is just hard because you could roll a one especially when it's, it's only one attack but you know that's the whole thing isn't it i suppose yeah, with the death yeah. grip he either grabs you and he doesn't and if he really gets hold of you he gives you a proper squeeze yeah you know, yeah that's the kind of thing yeah. he might just pop a foot off yeah, exactly. Um, which, you know, wouldn't come it's, keen, to say the least. Yeah. I mean, the war stomper kind of can throw bodies at people, which is cool. Um, which is quite funny. Hurled you, body. you just pick a model out of the unit and throw it at someone. Nothing which is more cool. annoying than grabbing their captain and throwing them yeah, at exactly. the rest of the unit. You know? um, you've kind of, you know, you've got all this terror. They've all kind of got terror, which is minus one bravery, which, you know, can do some stuff. Anything to protect them from rend? No, that's no. that's the issue. And with a four up save and they the absence of rend, and they don't have a mortal wound ignore that we've seen. There's yeah. nothing in the artifacts yeah. that will give them that. Okay, but you are still churning through a lot of wounds. wounds. Forty wounds if you take that um yeah. command trait. So. And you have to remember you have to be in a position to hit these things. If they've come in and done a hell of a lot of damage on their way in, eight attacks on two damage. Yeah, exactly. You know? 
threes and threes. I mean, they definitely have potential. Yeah, and there's a lot of kind of... You've got the crushing charge. You've well, got the stuff from in my net. There's a lot of specialist stuff yeah. going off, isn't there? You know, and uh, like you say, D6 yeah. mortal wounds if it's not a monster. You, these guess. things could hit quite hard, you know, especially if there was a pair of them, yeah. for instance. You might see something like that. Anything to mention on Gatekey, uh, the Gatebreaker or the Man Crusher? Uh, I mean, you know, he's got ten... I mean... He's got 10 attacks at full hit, 3 screens. Yeah. But it's minus 3 rent, 3 damage. Yeah, so it's okay. like, yeah, you know, so it's kind of making it up hits, for it. it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, they've all kind of got the stomps and death grips. You know, the war stomper stomps mm. better. And I mean, the mega, I think this gatebreaker is all about his flail. Um, he also can do better at people in garrison, so he's going to crush um, uh, Caradron Overlords. <laughs> but, you know. Um, I think it would have been nice. One thing I've noticed between the Man Crushers and the Mega Gargans, I Long Shanks. Um, yeah. I would have liked to have seen a pared down version of Long Shanks, so you could have yeah, made it with wound characteristics of five or yeah, something like that. You yeah. know, um, uh, so at least it's just stepping over a single character yeah. from blocking. Their I mean, way. they do have keep up, which is if they're within twelve inches of a Mega Gargan, they can run and charge. Um, yeah, because which helps they're trying them. to keep helps up with them. the Mega Gargan. But the idea of if if that was a rule across the faction, the idea of them just stepping over your ranks, yeah. which would enable you to not be shit, you know, to re make it really hard to shield. Yeah, your your rear ranks if these guys are just stepping over the front ranks, which is what would happen in yeah. my yeah. opinion. Even in these shorter guys, they could definitely step over a dude. A dude, yeah. Maybe not your crazy elves with a four foot, four foot long, uh, four inch long spears, but you know. Okay, uh, points wise, through 490, 490, 480, uh, 180, or 480 for three of the Man Crusher Yeah, one Gargans. of the nice things is if you take a unit of three Man Crusher Gargans, they actually count as three battle line. So you don't have to have. Nice. If you want a unit of three of them, that is your three battle it's line. just done. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Okay, um, well, that's it. That's a quick look through the book. It's not a huge uh, battle tone by any no. means, but there's only four cool. units in there. Some um, really nice lore, kind of talking, you know, it kind of tells you a bit more about um, each kind of the Age of Myth. The map in there for Gur is amazing. I always love it when they put maps in there because it's a that, dream really nice. for campaign planning. Details, and, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's a really nice book. I, I think for me it's a super welcome faction to Age of Sigmar. I'm looking forward to one day when tournaments are up and running again to show up and to just see some dude opposite me put five models down and go, should we go then? Yeah. And it's just going to be fun. You're yep. going to go, oh no, you know here what I mean? Go. It's like, here we go. Yeah. And uh, But I love that. I love yeah. that. I, I think one day I probably will get to the point where I've done these as a faction because I quite like the idea of the painting. I the think they lend, and you know, and I'd like to do a little bit more airbrush work, and I think they lend themselves really nice to kind of some nice blended yeah. airbrush work and those kind of things. So I'd really like to do that, and particularly the conversion. Although the first one, traditionally with the first one, I always like to build it out of the box before I start messing around. But maybe yeah. it just beggars the need. Yeah. There's certainly personalization, if not conversion, within that. Yeah. I think there's going to be a few extra things on the belt. You know, go back through your bits box. Have find bits from Ida and Epiphany yeah, and those it's kind gonna of be things. A crack eagle, Especially if it's a crack and eagle, like, like the tale of a Leviathan, uh, not yeah. a Leviathan, sorry, yeah, an Alapex, an or, Alapex something, or yeah. something like that is, is super tempting. Yeah. Um, and I've certainly got some spare bits, so um, yeah, that'd be good fun. Well, probably at that, we're done. Hope you enjoyed the review. Um, it's a quick look through. Like I say, it's not super detailed, there's only four units to look at. I think we've given you a flavour of what it's about. You're definitely going to be seeing Behem, uh, Sons of Behemoth um, at the very least as a, as a mercenary faction. Thank you very much, Games Workshop. Um, but I think we will build it out to a faction. Yeah. It's just going to be a fun one. And, 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 and I think you hit the nail on the head. For those players who are definitely looking for the kind of narrative style play, mm. What, what more do you want to put in a campaign? Oh, yeah, it's than coming great. Up against to just a bunch of gargons at a mountain campaign, pass yeah. that you've got to get past these guys before you can go on. And then and you end something. up hiring one of and them and he's with you for them. the rest of the game. It's just he's... a beery lad that can barely yeah, put yeah. sentences together, falling over on everything. It's just, <laughs> it brings to me some of the comedy element back into um, Age yeah. of Sigma, which I think we, you know, was always pre ever present in fantasy to a degree because you used to have the fallen giant template. Yeah, you know, yeah. 
Um, but you know, and, and Sigmar's got quite serious with some of its faction releases recently. It's nice to see a bit of fun in there as well. Yeah. So yeah, hope you enjoy it, and we'll see you on the next video. See ya. Thanks all.